The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Lord, Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth nations will be in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the world. The powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud of power and of glory. But when these signs begin to happen, stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life. And that day catch you by surprise like a trap. <clears throat> For that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you have strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Many of you may find it rather peculiar that every year here on the first Sunday of Advent we begin our preparation for Christmas by reflecting not on the birth of Christ, but rather upon his second coming. Our attention is not upon the child in the manger that the Lord coming to us as judge of the living and the dead, we are warned repeatedly, in fact, to stay vigilant, to stay watchful in our practice of the faith, told to avoid carousing and drunkenness and, and even anxiety, which is an affliction of this world and a reflection of a lack of it, to fear anything is not to trust in the mercy of God. We are told we know neither the day nor the hour where God will manifest himself and show himself to us. And the reason the church does this, I think, is simple, but nonetheless it's, it's important for us. The celebration of Christmas can become an exercise in sentimentality or in nostalgia. We can look back nostalgically either to our childhood and the experiences of Christmas, or simply nostalgically at the birth of Christ 2,000 years ago. <coughs> and once a year we can drag our religion out of the attic and dust it off along with all the decorations. The idea of Christ the Savior being born and becoming one of us can simply become part and parcel of the season along with Santa Claus and Christmas caroling and eggnog, it can become seen as simply one of the necessary ingredients of the season. And the most dangerous thing about this for us is that it can create a very powerful illusion. It can create the illusion of a living faith. The warmth and the good cheer of the season the joy that it generates within us, simply to be with family and friends, to have the semester over. It can make us think that we have actually embraced the gospel and the salvation that it promises. The good cheer, the high spirits may actually mask something of a rather grave contradiction within us. We can proclaim, in other words, the birth of the Savior. And in practicality, in all of our deeds, reject his commandments, not really live as those who believe that a Savior has been born unto us, that the gospel, that good news has been proclaimed, and that more than that, that we have been transformed into something different by that very event. Our sentimentality, the church tells us, must be rooted in reality, and all of our joy throughout this season must be established within the truth. Advent is not a merely looking back in nostalgia at a past event. 
It's looking forward to what this event has made possible for us. Again and again, the church throughout history tells us in Christ's embrace of our humanity, our humanity takes upon itself divinity. When Christ ascends into heaven and returns to the Father, he takes our humanity with him. And by uniting ourselves now to him in the Holy Eucharist, by being born again through the waters of baptism, we come to forever share in the life of the, of the most holy trinity. Deification. There's one word that we would gather back to ourselves as Christians. It would be this. It's not an arrogant thing for us to say that we become God by the grace of what we receive at this Holy Eucharist. Not through anything that we do. Not through somehow climbing up a mountain of virtue. By pure grace that God has given to us to share in his life. We cling so often to the illusion that we somehow do not struggle under the futility of life in this world. We think that we can make it a better place, that we can create a better world for ourselves. The worst that we can create that without the grace of God. Advent is a time when we prepare ourselves to be humble to acknowledge that smallness, that littleness, in order that Christ might lift us up to share in his own mind. Let's pray today that we would come to see with the eyes of faith our dignity and our true destiny as Christian men and women. That we would embrace it not only in our minds and our hearts, but the food manifesting the way that